Okay, let's keep going with that Venn diagram problem. So in part E, we are asked, what is the probability that a person speaks at least one of these languages? Now, I mentioned this on the previous page, but it's totally worth repeating. The phrase that I want to highlight here is that you are speaking at least one of these languages. And if you're speaking at least one of the languages, right, so that phrase, at least, we are going to swap out with the math symbol greater than or equal to, all right? So when it says at least one language, oh my goodness, still having trouble <laughs> writing the word language. I am on fire tonight. Um, at least one language we know that that's going to mean I speak greater than or equal to one language. Keeping in mind our options here is I, or are, I could speak zero languages, one language, or two languages. Because for the folks in our survey, those are the options. They, we are only keeping track of if they speak zero, one, or two. All right, and zero of Sp Spanish or French, one of Spanish or French, or both of Spanish and French. So if I want at least one language greater than or equal to one, I want the one language folks, and I want the two language folks, right? I specifically do not want anybody who speaks zero languages. So let's start thinking about where I'm going to put my pencil. I'm going to refer back to the previous page. And we're going to start counting how many languages do these folks speak. So again, I want greater than or equal to one language. So these folks here, how many languages do they speak? One. That is greater than or equal to one, so I want to use them. I want to include them. If I put my pencil here, how many languages do the folks in the football speak? Two. That number is greater than or equal to one, I would like to include them. How many languages do the folks in this right moon speak? One. That is greater than or equal to one, I would like to include them. How many languages do the folks over here speak? Zero. That is not greater than or equal to one. I do not want to include them in my final answer. So I would like to add these three numbers together and that will be the answer that I'm looking for. So we'll remember 56, 18, and 14. So here, when I want the probability that someone speaks at least one language, okay, we had the folks that spoke just Spanish, the folks that spoke both, and the folks that spoke just French. Okay, and let me box this so it's not overlapping. And when we add those three numbers together, we get 0.88. And I hope that seems a little familiar. This is the same as saying, or I speak Spanish or French. Because if you remember when we first talked about ors, in the stats world, when you say or, it means you speak one language or the other language or both. And that's exactly what at least one language means. So uh, this is equivalent, right? the same as the probability of Spanish or French, right? We calculated that in part C. This is the same calculation, all right? If you wanted to use set notation, right? Keep in mind, these were the people that spoke just Spanish. These were the people that spoke both. These were the people that spoke just French. So I could have written this if I wanted to, right? Probability of at least one language. If it was just Spanish, we'd say Spanish and not French, right? If it was both, we'd say Spanish and French. If it was just French, we'd say French and not Spanish. If you want to use set notation, great, go for it. And if you just want to leave it here, great, go for it. So that's where I'm getting the 56 plus the 18 plus the 14, and that again gets me to 88. I could have also used the complement rule. We talked about that in part D, but who were the only people that I didn't want to include in my, my answer? These guys, 
right? I wanted to rule out those 12%. Well, if we do 1 minus 0.12, there's 88% again. Right? So we can use the complement rule in this if you would like. Okay. All right, so with that, let's move over to part F. Okay. I'm going to do part F, and then what I would recommend you do is pause for a moment and try and do part G on your own. F. And part F says, um, what is the probability that if a person speaks French, he or she also speaks Spanish? And I want to point out if, that's the conditional um, phrase. So when we think about our conditional probability formula, we have formula 2, the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Right? That's formula two. That's one of the two formulas that we are always allowed to use. So great. Now we want to be careful. All right, so we have if a person speaks French, he or she also speaks Spanish. And so this is the condition, right? We are given the person speaks French. So instead of the letter B, I'm going to use the letter F. All right, and then I want instead of the letter A, I'm going to do Spanish. So S. So I want the probability of S given f. That's what I'm looking at in here. Now as we start to go through that, right, I'm going to have the probability of s and f over the probability of f. Okay. So let's figure out what these numbers are. I'm going to refer back to the Venn diagram. Now if I want s and f, and I'm in a Venn diagram, that's the football. So I'm going to look, and inside my football, it looks like there's 18%. So that's going to be my numerator. Okay. My denominator is the probability that a person speaks French. Now be careful. I've mentioned this a few times, but it's always worth repeating. The probability that a person speaks French is not 14%. That is just the right moon you need the entire circle. So what is the probability that a person speaks French? 32%, 18 plus 14. So I will put 0.32 here, and then I need to figure out that ratio. So let's see what we got. Turn this on, we got 18% divided by 32%, and we are looking at about 56%. So again, I would recommend pause for a moment, see if you can do part G, and then unpause the tape and see if you match what I've got. We're going to keep going. So for G, this is what is the probability that if a person speaks Spanish, he or she also speaks French. So let me do the if, okay? Now, this time the condition is that the person speaks Spanish, not that they speak French. So I'm going to switch this order. So now I want the probability of F given s. Alright, so I'm going to swap my letters through. I have the probability of f and s over the probability of s. Okay. Well, we're on that Venn diagram, so where does the and live? Still lives in the football. So I know my numerator is going to be the same as it was in part f. It's going to be 18%. So okay, let me give myself some space and we'll put 18%. What's about to change is the denominator, because we now want the probability that someone speaks Spanish. So as I go over here, for the Spanish-speaking folks in my survey, it is not just these 56%, right? it's the entire circle. So we really got to be careful with the left moon is not enough for the Spanish-speaking folks in my survey. It's the entire circle, and we know 56 plus 18 adds up to 74. So when I go to put my denominator in here, I'm putting 74%. And then let's take a look. What is that ratio of 18 to 74? We've got about 24%. Okay. All right, so that is our first look at a Venn diagram. We're going to try another one in problem number two.